Whenever you have a really long document, it makes sense to put a table of contents that gives somebody a reference to what pages different things are on. Um, and if they're using a digital version of your document, they can even click on that table of contents and it'll take them right to that, um, whatever that item is within the document. So it's a very handy way of getting around the document as well. So this is just a, a random um, syllabus from a course I teach. Um, normally I wouldn't have a, uh, a um, table of contents in this, but I can use this as an example to show you how to create a table of contents in um, Microsoft Word and have it done in a way that's very time efficient and where a lot of the, um, the work is done by Microsoft Word itself. All right, so let's come in here and um, let's just make a few different um, headings within this document, um, items that would go in the table of contents. So right now, if I click on one of these, um, click on a line here, so I just clicked where the name of the, um, of the course is, and you look up here, um, so I'm on the Home tab, and you look under Styles, the one that's highlighted is the one that says Normal. So that means it's not a heading. Only headings are gonna show up within the table of contents. So in order to make this show up in a table of contents, once I insert it, um, it has to have one of these heading titles. So let's make it heading one. Um, heading one are gonna be the bigger headings. Heading two are gonna be sort of subheadings. And as we use subheadings, it's gonna keep adding different layers of subheadings. So right now we have heading one, heading two. Once I use heading two, it'll add a heading three. And once I use heading three, they'll add a, add a heading four up here and so on and so forth. So again, let's highlight the, um, the course title here. Let's make that a heading one level. And so it's going to do the formatting that's set within this Word document um, for heading one type uh, headers to look like. And so it centered it, it changed the, the font to um, Times New Roman from uh, Arial that I originally had. And you can change this. So you can make any of the headings look any way you want them to. So for instance, let's go up here to heading one and I'm gonna right click it and go to modify. All right, so within Modify, I can change it. I can make it um, Arial if I want from Times New Roman. I can change the size of the font. I can make it bold, underlined, italic, um, whatever it is you want to do. And you can um, change this. And so anytime you make something heading one, it's going to change it to whatever your um, modified style is. So I'm not going to bother with this now, but um, it's there if you need it. So I'm going to hit Cancel. All right, so here's heading one. Let's make um, maybe graduate assistance can be a heading two. So let's go to heading two. So I'm gonna click this. And um, now let's make a couple other things. Heading two, maybe a, a heading two for the, uh, the biographical information for the textbook. So hit heading two again. And let's just make it, this supplemental material heading two as well. And so we have a few now. And so what we now need to do is we need to insert the table of contents. Right now there is no table of contents. We've added headings, but no table of contents to display those headings. Um, so let's put it at the very beginning of the document here, just as an example. And so I'm, I'm clicked at the very beginning. I have a line all to itself. And we're going to go to references. And so within references, there's this table of contents um, tab and we're gonna to go to table of contents within that, and I'm just gonna use the first automatic table of contents option, but there's multiple ones here. And this is also something that can be adjusted and you can make custom versions of this. All right, so we'll use the first one, and you see it took all the, um, all the headings that were in the document, and it looks like I already had uh, a heading for tentative class schedule, which is later on in the document, but it, it created a um, table of contents containing all of those headings. All right, so it also has the page number of all those headings listed there. So what if I add a new heading? So let's do something that doesn't have headings. So instructor, instructors is not within this uh, table of contents. It's not a heading, so let's click on that. We'll go back to home and we'll make that a level two heading. All right, so that means that should pop up here as a level two, so these are all level two headings. It should pop up within that area. Right now it's not though. 
The reason it hasn't is we haven't updated the table of contents. So anytime we change something, so we add a new heading, or um, I can also, uh, let's see, uh, graduate assistance is one of them. So let me also put a page break here, which is going to change which page the um, graduate assistance should show up on. So now it's on page two, but up here, graduate assistance is showing up on page one. All right, so again, this hasn't been updated. All we have to do though to update it, which is super easy, is click the table of contents, um, and we're going to right click and go to update field. And so then it's gonna give us the option to only update the page numbers, which would not add new headings or adjust heading names if you've, if you've changed anything, or you can update the entire table, which is going to adjust the names and the page numbers. So that's what, that's what I'm gonna do here. And so when I click OK, you're going to see graduate assistance is now going to be on page two, not page one, and it's going to add an instructor's heading in this uh, heading level two. So there's instructors and graduate assistants are on page two now. All right, so you can create headings throughout the document and you can create the table of contents and then just update it anytime something changes or if you're adding text within the document and pages are changing, all you have to do is update it. And you're not going through and manually typing in the table contents, which is a huge pain. Um, this is much, much easier, much, much faster. Um, but you do have to do a little bit of setup ahead of time in order to make it work. So hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I will try to get back to you on those. Um, and if you are interested in this kind of stuff, I have other videos that are very similar to this. And a whole slew of videos that I'm going to be uploading on um, different things uh, that are research related in an exercise science lab. So please come back and watch some more videos and um, look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks.